Our stop number one is going to talk about the different types of investigations. We're going to start pit stop A talking about descriptive and comparative investigations. We're going to be working on page 8. Be sure that on page 7 you leave a spot for the tools chart. Okay, you'll do that at the independent station tomorrow or you already did it yesterday. But that's what belongs on page 7, so be sure we're not writing on there today. Today we're going to be writing on page 8. And like I said, our title is going to be Descriptive and Comparative Investigations. So that's going to go at the top of the page. Descriptive and Comparative Investigations. I mentioned that all of stop one is going to be about the different types of investigations. So before we get into the types, I want to be sure that we're clear on, in science, what we mean by an investigation. Um, a lot of science is about asking questions, asking questions about the world around us, why do things work the way that they do. And so really an investigation is coming up with an answer to those questions. Um, you may have heard of it as a scientific method before. But really a method, the scientific method is a very specific process and in our, um, our thinking today it doesn't have to be certain step by step. We're going to write our definition at the top of investigation. I apologize for the camera focusing in and out like that. All right, an investigation is a process where evidence is collected in order to answer a scientific question. We'll get into over the next few weeks how that evidence is collected, but many times that's through observations, taking measurements, recording data. Okay, so we have investigation, a process where evidence is collected in order to answer a scientific question. Today we're going to talk about two types of those investigations. So I'm going to make a T chart so we can write about one down one side and one on the other. So at the top, on the left side of my T-chart, I'm going to have the descriptive investigations. And I'm going to draw the line all the way down. This is going to take up the rest of our page. And on the right side, comparative investigations. Okay. Descriptive investigations are just what they sound like. The word describe is the same root word as the word descriptive. This is where we use a lot of observations to describe different findings. Um, a lot of times astronomers, meteorologists, um, geologists will conduct descriptive investigations. They're using careful observations and measurements to help develop findings. A lot of times when we don't know a lot about the subject or whatever it is that they're investigating. So we're going to say that this is based mainly on observations. Those observations, remember, can be um, qualitative or quantitative. Okay. The different parts of the scientific inquiry or the process of finding these answers, the descriptive investigation still has a, um, a question. Remember, we have a question that we're trying to answer. We also still have procedures, the instructions on what to do during the investigation or how to take observations or measurements. And we always have a conclusion. We want to come to some kind of conclusion about our findings. So we're going to say that it contains the question, 
procedures. And conclusion. As part of the conclusion, there can also be um, graphs and different other types of analysis to show the findings. Okay, and that goes for all investigations. Let's scoot up a little bit. Okay, next, um, another thing that we often think of with the process of scientific inquiry or the scientific method is a hypothesis, that prediction. And in a descriptive investigation, when we're just trying to describe um, an object or a substance, there is no hypothesis or prediction. There is no hypothesis or prediction. When it comes to looking at different types of investigations and determining um, which type it is. Say we give you an example and we ask what type of investigation is this. There are some keywords that often go with these descriptive investigations. Those include observe, describe, list, and identify. The last thing I'm going to add on my T-chart is an example. When you finish this video, there is a link below the video link in Schoology, and it takes you to a page from Texas Gateway, a website that has a lot of information, but about halfway down the page, it also has a spot for you to check your understanding, where it gives you different examples and you decide whether they are descriptive or comparative. So I'm going to leave this example section blank. And after you've completed that check your understanding, you're going to record an example of a descriptive investigation from that page. So moving on to comparative investigations. Again, the word comparative, very similar to the word compare. That's the same root word. So this is usually an investigation where we are comparing two things, or maybe two different organisms, two different features, collecting data under two different conditions in order to compare them. Um, for example, if you are going to look at two different insects and compare the external anatomy, what um, features do they have on the outside, that would be a comparative investigation. So this is where we are going to collect data to make a comparison. Again, that um, comparison could be two different um, conditions, two different, at two different times of year, at two different locations, at two different temperatures, um, depending on what it is that you're investigating. Just like the descriptive investigation, it's going to have a question. We're always answering a scientific question. There's going to be some sort of procedure and conclusion, but now we also have a hypothesis or a prediction. Um, you can make a prediction based on what you are about to, to compare. So we're going to say contains question hypothesis, and I'm going to underline that one since that's different from descriptive. procedure and conclusion. Again, just like every investigation, it also has um, the data collection and then graphs and analysis so that the, the findings or the answer to the scientific question can be shared. It also can have variables. Um, we'll talk more about variables in stop B, or excuse me, pit stop B of stop one um, on page nine, but know that um, comparative investigations can have variables. Variables are just the things that are, are changed in an experiment or that can be changed. Um, so occasionally there can be comparative um, investigations that have variables. Again, if you were given an investigation and you were asked to determine 
which type of investigation is this, there's some keywords that we might be looking for. Um, the first being the word compare, or the next word being similarity or difference, or categorize. Again, I'm going to leave the example spot blank. Now that you've finished these notes on page 8, if you go back into Schoology, um, underneath the link for the Pit Stop A notes that you're watching right now, there's a link for Check Your Understanding, Descriptive and Comparative Investigations. Scroll down to that Check Your Understanding part. Click on Descriptive or Comparative for each example, depending on what you think it is. They'll tell you if you're right or wrong. And then um, after you get them right, record an example down here at the bottom of the page.